Hi there, my name is Rob Berman and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Special Makeup Effects. This video will be one in a series of tapes designed for those of you interested in special makeup effects, either as just a hobby or you, like myself, who have ever seriously considered entering the world of professional makeup. In the first video, you will be seeing effects ranging from simple applications such as cuts and bruises and scars to bald caps and zombies such as our friend here. Oh, by the way, here, take lunch. On our series of tapes to come, the more advanced effects you will be seeing are impressions, life casts, body casts, sculpting, mold making, and full facial prosthetics. Now, before starting an application, be sure to take into consideration the sensitivity of your model's skin. All the materials we will be using have been tested for skin sensitivity. However, you may find the occasional model whose skin may be irritated by the makeup. Be sure to test your materials on a small area before proceeding on to the rest of the face. Also, take extreme care around the eyes so as not to get any adhesives or removers in them that could prove harmful. And now, let's begin our demonstrations. So what we'll do now is a mortician's wax cut. What we've got here is one of the many different brands of mortician's wax that we use. And what we do is we take and we soften it up in our hands so that it applies much easier. It's, it's naturally sticky so it helps to put maybe a little Vaseline on your hands first to keep it from sticking to you. And then for a very large gash like this, what we do is kind of roll it out and give ourselves a basic shape. And then we'll put it on and we'll just spread it first with our hands. with my tool and smooth it and you're actually sculpting right on the person. of a natural anatomy as possible so it doesn't look like you've got a big lumpy thing on the guy's cheek. It's much easier to do on a very solid surface like a forehead or areas like that and much more difficult to do on say a neck just because you need to push and try and sculpt it around. If it's on a neck, the skin gives way too much. The cheek is kind of like an in-between. It's, uh, it's soft, but still has enough firmness in there to be able to get the wax on properly. Sometimes if you have a little, just a little too much on, you can just scrape it down a little. This is the most difficult part of it is getting it all nice and smooth and blended well. Because if it's not, when you put the color over the top of it, you'll see all around the sides where your appliance is sitting. And it'll give, give away your effect. You've got it basically smooth where you want it. You can go over it, you'll go over it with a little bit of Vaseline to really smooth it out.
takes a little working to get it all blended in well. But once it's there and once you've finished your effect, it really is a nice looking effect. And somewhat simple compared to like putting on a prosthetic appliance. This takes a lot less preparation and is a lot easier on the on your subject. large or real small obviously the larger that your your wound you want to have the more time it takes in smoothing it down and getting it to look just right coloration Let's put a little makeup foundation over the top because it's not a latex base you can use a cream foundation as opposed to a, a rubber mask grease which is a lot harder to spread over your over the mortician's wax difficult to get off whereas you need an alcohol or cleanse or some other type of remover for rubber mask grease this just comes off with cold cream or even just soap and water with using the wax is somewhat obvious in the sense that really, really hot weather, it'll tend to start to melt or uh, if you move around too much, make a lot of facial expressions, it'll tend to crack after a short period of time. But it is a real good effect for uh, still photos or even uh, you know, just short term application. What you want to do go over the piece because the foundation is a little yellow, a little grayed out. You need to punch a little red back into it. And it will add life to it. On camera it, it adds translucency by adding color.
Germans always read makeups as being real flat, unless you just punch a little bit of that color back in there. Cameras tend to absorb the reds and pinks and oranges and uh, simulate depth to skin. back in with our spatula and we'll open up our wound create a real deep gaping wound with this is one of the reasons I like it so much. You can go back in with your Krylon palette. And deepen it. The inside of the wound. It's a little hard to color sometimes because of the fact that it is a soft putty. It tends to want to stick to just about everything. You can uh, circumvent that a little bit with maybe Vaseline on your tools or whatnot, but you don't want to end up with that on your brush. It's always nice to have an extra set of hands to help you. I'm going to use a slightly lighter pinky color for the inside of the skin than you do on the ins very inside of the wound. That'll give you that depth that you look for. And really the darker you go with the inside of the wound, the deeper it's going to look. If you use any other color than your reds, you always want to make sure you mix some of your reds into that color so that they become complementary colors and they don't look too stark against one another. I like to use my hand as an extra palette because then I can see what the colors are going to look like when they go up against 
the skin. Of course, and my hands get all very messy, but. simple because you know you're going to go back in there with some blood and the blood's going to cover up most of what you've done anyway sometimes if your wax is thin enough and you paint a dark enough color against the back of it you can actually see the color through the skin the wax it gives you kind of a purpley effect If you do, you can make it another piece to the wound. Okay. the color all the way out to the very edge of the wax because there's always a like a fatty layer against the skin that always remains kind of white you have to be very careful with white because it's very stark sometimes I put a little yellow into it to tone it down and right up along the edge of the wound you can do a real light color because when you do get something a cut this large it shocks the skin a little bit all the blood drains out of it. It gets very pale. And then something that really doesn't occur reality but helps to sell the drama of it we do it a lot in film is get a nice little uh, a pinky color you kind of go around just the out beyond the outside of it Sometimes, the problem with using caro syrup blood is it tends to bead against the wax rather than flow with it. If 
you're just using it inside the wound against the skin it won't bead as much and it'll give a slick glisteny type surface on the inside and that's our version of a wax buildup cut The next effect we're going to do is a bald cap. Uh, tends to be rather complex for some people until you've got the hang of it. Uh, there are a variety of different types of caps. There is uh, the plastic cap, which we're about to use now, and then there are latex caps and uh, varieties of them ranging from very cheap, which uh, the caps tend to be, uh, to very expensive, which makes the cap a much nicer, uh, makes it a n much nicer to apply. This is basically a medium expensive cap. <laughs> um, you want to slip it on over their head and have them hold the front in place and slide the back down and just kind of tuck it down so it's snug. If you, t if you warm up the plastic cap a little bit in your hand, stretch it around and things like that, um, it'll fit much better and then as it cools on their head, it'll pull a little tighter and any wrinkles or anything you may have in your cap will disappear. Um, you always want to pull from okay, pull from right about at the ears forward toward the chin to seat the cap where you want it to be. That'll keep you from getting buckles in the back and in the front. If you pull it down to where you want it and then have them have your model hold the sides you can come in with a pencil, doesn't matter which color, um, like lip liner or eyeliner pencil, something like that, and you can mark just, just inside the curvature of the ear, and then kind of straight down on, on the sides, and bring it around, because you want, you want to go down far enough to cover up even the sideburns and then go along about a half an inch in front of the person's hairline. And that'll be, you'll come in with scissors and you'll trim all that out and it'll tuck down around their ear and right where you want it to be along their hair. you've marked it where you want it, you can come back in with your scissors and then trim it. You can let go for a moment, at least on this side. You should actually hold the other side down. And trim right along the line. You always want to pull it nice and taut before you decide where your line is going to be because if you dr draw your line while the cap is loose, you won't have enough bald cap to put down over the person's hair. And if you stretch it too far, you're going to be fighting with the fact that it's going to want to keep creeping off of the person's head. I'm going to put my cap down with spirit gum. If you can hold this for me. 
because uh, it's something that's going to be more readily available to most people. There are other adhesives, uh, Prosade or Dow Corning's 355, things like that, that uh, are available, but they're very expensive and they're real difficult to remove. Spirit gum has always been a real good standby. Sometimes when spirit gum doesn't stick down right away, you can kind of tack it back and forth a little bit and it gets it much stickier. And then when you go to lay it down, it'll stay much easier. Just run your brush right down underneath the cap. It'll get glue all along that whole edge for you. Okay, what you want to do with the back, you try and pull the hair off to the side. You want to glue the center of the back first and get that stuck down. Pull it down as tight as you possibly can because that's going to give you a lot of all your snugness and you don't want the head, the cap to wrinkle on your, uh, if the person wearing the cap ever t tilts his head back. What you want to do is you want to pull down and forward to get this side to stick down. Once it's down, sometimes you can go over just the seam a little bit. Sometimes it tends to curl up a little. You want to just make sure that sticks 
down flat. The flatter and the, the smoother you lay down this whole edge here, uh, the easier it's going to be to blend off when you go in with duo. Some people use use solvents to sort of melt the edge of the cap down a little bit, but uh, the problem with that is the solvents start to attack the, the gum underneath and your cap will start to slide off and it'll loosen the, loosen the glue up and after a couple of hours you'll find out that you're going to have to start all over again and put a new cap on. The next step that I do is I use duo surgical adhesive or uh, even a thickened latex will work or something like that as opposed to the solvent that other people use. And I take and I put a little bit on the end of a spatula and then I just go along my edge and I fill the gap all the way along around the whole piece. You put it on evenly enough so that it dries evenly so you don't have wet pockets underneath. You don't really want to puddle it as much as you just want to fill that little blending edge line between the skin and the cap. Sometimes you have to go over it a couple of times is to get it on smooth the first time because if it's lumpy and it dries that way then you have to find a way to dry to get rid of the lumps and you can't really do that that's why I like a nice smooth flat tool for this hard edge on the edge of your duo either because then that'll be just like another blending edge you'll have to get rid of The hardest thing about putting on a cap is just keeping it smooth all over. I mentioned earlier about warming the cap up first because when it's on the model their head will warm it up. So you want to warm it up a little bit hotter than their head's going to be so that uh, you've already stretched it to its maximum potential before you've even started. And then when it goes back on him or her, it will, uh, it will sort of shrink tight. It's hard to do on uh, older people because their skin is so much looser. And you end up uh, giving them a facelift. <laughs> there is a blender on your edge.
the next part to doing a cap after you blended off all the edges with a spatula is going with a, a nice white makeup sponge with a little duo on it and stipple a heavy layer over the edge that you use the spatula on and that will bring back in texture for you and give you an idea you'll be able to see if there are any edges that you missed or anything like that and it'll soften up the, the slight spatula lines that are in your blending edge continue with this all the way around just like the other. You don't need to stipple too far out onto the forehead just because this fine an edge won't be seen. It won't read even to the eye except for maybe as a little bit of a shine before you powder it. And as it starts to get a little drier in here, if you go back over it again, you'll soften up even that heavy stipple edge. And if you catch it with a cross light where the light comes in, you can see a shine on there. You'll be able to see if there's a step in the edge of your bald cap and the skin, whether it is there or not. When you stipple it, just go a little bit past where you put the first layer on with the spatula. And you'll give yourself a nice feathered edge. purposes of this video what I will do is I will continue on off camera and finish off this layer and then we'll come back and color it now what I'll do now that all the stipple coat is done I'm going to powder my edge to double check it and make sure it's it's uh, all blended off well but also just to set the latex so if it buckles over it won't stick to itself. You want to powder it heavily just because of the fact that the latex will be somewhat self-adhesive and it will like to stick on itself quite a bit. Once it has, it's all over. There's no fixing it. And I'll take a soft blush brush and just brush off all the excess. Now we get to the point where we use the Kryolan palette. You take a sponge and trim a rounded end on it. Take all the hard edges off of it because when you go and you stipple on the, on the color, 
you if you have a hard edge it'll make a line if you don't have a hard edge it'll it'll tend to fade out instead of that hard line of makeup on the cap so we get that that smooth surface like so and then we can take we take the color and start right around where we blended the edge and just stipple over the whole edge. While blending it off into the skin. You can go pretty heavy with it because this is a, a cover you want to cover any difference in coloration if your if your model's skin tone is much darker than the cap you have to go with a heavier coat of coloration on the cap because the paleness of the cap underneath your makeup will show through we're lucky in this case because the cap is pretty close to his own skin color You don't have to go out too far away, as long as your base color is real close to his actual skin color. You don't have to go all into the rest of the face. A lot of people do that, but it's really unnecessary. You can just get the coverage over the cap and just over your rubber edge. You shouldn't have to continue down over the rest of the subject's face. So once you've got your initial base coat done, you go in with a little more translucent powder just to set that. Rubber mask grease makeup needs to have a powder to set it because it never really dries, it always stays wet. The powder sends, tends to keep it in one place and, and almost dries it or catalyzes it even. and keeps it from when you go in for the next coat from picking up the base color to mix in with your final coat. In this case what we have is we have our initial base and we just take a little bit out of a red, this orangey red, and mix it in with the base so that it's a complementary color so that it matches with your base doesn't look like another stark color going on over the top. And you mix in enough to kind of match the red tones in the rest of the face. Once you've got that, get another stipple sponge or you can even use your same stipple sponge very very lightly put those red tones back in there not as heavy a coat as your initial base coat but 
enough to just kind of accent it. Because your base coat is a little bit grayer or flatter or lighter than your flesh tone. You need this other to kind of come in there and warm it up, give it a little bit of life to it. Because without it, it looks a little flat and dead. It helps to stand back a little bit from it to get an overall look. Especially when you're doing small pieces in very small, limited areas. Because you need to be able to see that that patch that you just did of makeup actually does fit in with the rest of the flesh tones. And if you want, you can always go back in and use a slightly darker version of that with a little darker brown color. And sometimes a little bit of blue. that and give it a a fresh shaved look. Because the, the, even though a shaved head, you'll see it's shaved and there's no hair, you'll still see a little bit of hair in the follicles. And just follow along where his natural hairline was. get that new marine look. And those are the basic principles in doing a ball cap. For a full face zombie effect, what you'd like to do is start off doing a, a highlight and shadow type age makeup. But being a zombie, you don't want to use natural colors. You want to use grays, blues, greens, yellows, and things. You want to follow their natural lines on their face as much as possible. I'm using a fine tip brush with my Kryolan rubber mask grease palette because I like the way the colors smooth on. And as they sit on the skin, they tend to absorb into the skin and look a lot more natural. You can go back over if you go a little heavy and blend things in a little bit so that they're not such stark colors. You can do the same type effect with more natural colors to do a highlight and shadow age makeup actually. not a whole lot of rules for some kind of makeup like this, but uh, you have to learn certain parts of the anatomy first to know where the hollows and things are that are gonna that are gonna sink in in this type of a makeup. temples, 
around under the bottom lip. Maybe even a cleft in the chin. Because you'll be going over the surface of this with some with the gel effects, either flesh tone or clear, you want to go a little harsh with your colors. If they're if they're a little too faint, they won't show up well through the through the gelatin. reasons it works better to use a wider brush. Deepening in underneath the jawline really gives you a nice hollowed out effect. And you can actually see in a person's face where their hollowed areas are going to be. to blend out some of your harsher lines.
really want to uh, get all your one color, like in this case the blues, out of the way. Get them done rather than switching back from color to color. It saves a lot of time in cleaning your brushes between each application. In uh, real young subjects, a lot of people work on children and things. They find uh, it a lot harder to follow any natural lines that are there because in the younger people they're not. Uh, you end up with uh, just following normal anatomy structures. You know naturally that the cheeks would sink in and uh, you know around the sides of the nose sometimes very very often you'll see a little break here in the nose It'll be a little dip from the end of the bone coming down and stopping. Uh, when a body tends to rot or decompose, you end up, uh, that would sink way back. So you try to give the illusion of that sinking. You can be real sketchy with it because of the fact you'll be going over it with the gelatin. Sometimes you need to even darken in areas more. Corners of the eyes should be real dark and deep. So that gives a nice eerie effect. Sometimes what you can do is you can go in and use some mortician's wax or do mold and wax out the eyebrows. It gives a very, very disturbing effect. Always just keep shadowing the hollows and keep those darks because dark because the areas that aren't hollow you're going to want to highlight and bring out, make them stand out further so it'll make your hollows look darker. The two sides don't really need to match up identically. You can change around, you know, because people's faces aren't even on both sides. It's nice to be able to break it up so it doesn't look too symmetrical and even on both sides. That takes a little bit of the believability away from it. But if they're too uneven, again, that'll also take away too much believability. You can kind of see where this could be done more subtly 
in an age of makeup, deepening in the lines and things. Again, much harder on young, very young people. Or film, if you're going to age someone that's, for example, 10 years old, a highlight and shadow age just uh, isn't enough. You'd want to go in with prosthetics and things, which is much more extensive but you really can't do this kind of a shadow and age on a 10 year old. base color in all the other colors you put on, your colors will complement each other rather than looking, uh, looking separate. Your browns will always have a little bit of the blue tint to it if you mix the little blue into it, with the blue being your base. to do because there really are no rules to go by. Kind of why we call it makeup, because you get to make it up. I'm going with, I like to use yellows for my highlights in a, in a corpse makeup, because it gives a real sickly color. When it blends in with the blues and things, you get your greens without really having to add them. You want to stay away from whites only because they look so stark that it starts to look very unreal. a little red which you don't want to have too much of in this type of a makeup because it starts to look alive particularly on camera the yellows will cut that out very well to highlight above the collarbone, make it stand out. It's, it gives you that gaunt effect the same way you would get in the cheeks. And any high points at all are really nice.
highlighting the center of the lid gives you that very rounded, bug-eyed look. It works real well. At this point it begins to look very theatrical, which would work very well on stage, but not real well for film, where you'd be doing a lot more close-ups and things. I do it this dark again just because the gelatin is going to blend it all together very well. You're going to lose a lot of your definition. You need to be real harsh in your colors at this stage. your model look up when you're doing the lower lid because it takes uh, gives your lower lid a little more tension allows the, the colors to go on a little more smoothly over your dark colors. You want to use your light colors first, but being that I'm separating my highlights from my shadows, that's, that's not important. But if you start doing your dark colors first, your white colors, your light colors go over the top and start to look real muddy, start to look mottled and not clear, defined colors. your fine brush and just give they're almost like just squiggles but what they do is they look like you know, little moldy areas and splits and things in the skin you don't, wanna, you don't need to do too much of that at this point because again your gelatin is going to wipe a lot of it out Gives your lower lid a little more tension, allows the, the colors to go on a little more smoothly. Okay. Go in and deepen 
some places even more. A little gray and a little brown is always nice for that. You don't want to do it too much, you just want to break it up. People have a tendency to find a thing that works for them real well in one area and they continue it all over and then it becomes too much. As a rule, if you're going to keep going back over your dark colors, you want to use your light colors first. But being that I'm separating my highlights from my shadows, that's, that's not important. But if you start doing your dark colors first, your white colors, your light colors go over the top and start to look real muddy, start to look mottled and not clear, defined colors. your fine brush and just give they're almost like just squiggles but what they do is they look like you know, little moldy areas and splits and things in the skin you don't want to you don't need to do too much of that at this point because again your gelatin is going to wipe a lot of it out Especially if you use a, a flesh tone gel effects, it's uh, semi-translucent, so you still get color coming through it. But because it does have a tint to it, it does take away some of your base colors. The trick is when you're doing these kind of broken vessel lines and things to give it a random appearance rather than patterned. It's one of the most difficult things to break out of. People have a tendency to, to pattern them.
Okay. Let's see if our gelatin is ready. to use a disposable throwaway brush only because it's very wide gives you a lot of surface you want to test your gelatin on the inside of your wrist to tell if it's too hot because you really don't want to put it on them if it's going to be too hot and this is a little warm at this point so what it's nice to do is uh, put a little bit on a, a tray or a pallet to cool it down a little bit. Gel effects comes in small little bottles that you can heat up all alone by the way they are and uh, actually squeeze it out but I prefer to use it in a double boiler because you can mix up a larger quantity of it goes on warm at first but it cools rather rather quickly you can put it on real thin and then do colored layers do a little more vein work and things like that because the colors are, and the gel effects are translucent enough to where you can put it on layers and actually see through the various layers. It actually gives you a depth to the skin. over the eyes and eyelashes and over the mouth. It's very safe and uh, actually edible material. It's very sweet. But after a short period of time, the sweetness starts to get a little bad, so you don't want to snack on it. <laughs> and it just dissolves right off in water which is the nice thing about it, what I like. starts out looking very, very wet and sticky, but when you go over it with a little bit of powder, once it's finished, you get a, uh, it almost looks like a dead skin look, just a thin layer of dead skin. in using powder is if you put enough powder on your powder puff and fold it in half and scrub it together your powder puff will hold a lot more powder and you can dab it right on sticky until you powder it or until it's cooled for a long period of time. Powder kind of sets it and allows you to work on it again without your brush or sponges or anything sticking to it.
see now, of course, there's a lot more powder on it than there was, how much the dark lines disappear. using the translucent powder because it's not as stark as like white talcum powder or baby powder. It gives you a little more richness. It's a little bit more invisible on the skin. The white powder always looks like that clown white, white face. Then you can go in with a little bit of water on a wet makeup sponge. Go in and pull the, pow the excess powder right off the top. back out again. because the water will start to start to make your gelatin sticky again. brush again and add I like using the Kryolan palette they've got a real dark deep red but you 
don't want to go too much. You can add in. broken blood vessels and veins. Particularly in the cheeks and around the eyes. much with the reds because then it starts bring, taking it away from that dead look. Just enough to highlight and accent a few areas. continue doing layer after layer after layer to create a real, real deep effect. It's tacky. You go back over it and give it a, a real textural look. So it's not a smooth glaze anymore, it becomes a, a real pitted pockmark texture.
as it cools more and more, you can really give it a, a real stringy, messy look. back. gelatin layer is, the more meaty these wounds will be. Then you can lift some up and just give yourself, so you can go back in with some color underneath it. Gelatin also works well for things like bullet holes, other kinds of cuts and wounds and stuff. Once you've kind of mastered getting the, the gelatin on, you can do slow bit builds up, build ups. back off of it. So then it gives you a, 
some shiny areas, some flat areas, different kind of textures here and there. before you can actually rub your brush down under the edge of the gelatin and you'll be able to get color showing through it You don't want to outline it evenly all the way around the wound. You just want to do more or less one side other than the other because then that will give you your depth. You can do go up and do both sides, but you want to make one side a little more dramatic than the other. If you have a coarse enough sponge, it will uh, it will give you, punch in a little bit of blood vessels and things. It's always a nice look. This is always a nice finishing touch to go in because the hair always looks a little too straight and normal.
and again it just comes right off in a shower. It'll dissolve in just water by itself. Uh, rubbing it off with like a wet towel or something, but I've found a shower with the pressure from the shower head gets it all off a lot faster. good way for opening up all the wounds and things in the gelatin. A good tool to use for that is uh, like the back of a butter knife or something like that. Uh, I was using a, a dental tool that worked out pretty nicely. You end up with a really, really vulgar looking creature. You don't have to stop here. You can go on to an infinite number of ghoul zombie variations. Well, there you have it. We hope our demonstrations help to clarify some of the mysteries of makeup effects and its techniques. In our tapes to follow, you will learn how to actually construct your own prosthetic makeup appliances and also how to apply them to achieve the most dramatic result. Remember, the only limitations to special makeup effects are those you set for yourself. There's an unlimited resource of possibilities that have yet to be explored, and with the proper supplies and techniques, all that is left is your imagination. So long. See you next time.